name's Danielle Festa. I am a contemporary realist is what I call myself, but basically I work in the traditional technique of realism, but I pull in a, a twist of textiles. And I've been working in this way for, gosh, the last 15 years, which seems crazy. Um, but since I graduated UMass, it was actually during my thesis year that I came up with this concept of um, calling attention to the what we wear and what it says about us or how, how it makes us feel or how we're perceived um, to the outside world. So I've done everything from grabbing candids on the street, getting people in their natural environment, so to speak, to actually asking people to sit for me or even having people send me references to then work from. Um, so I have a studio here in Dover. I have a, um, in the Washington Street Mills. I've been there for, let's see, since 2016, so almost five years. And before that, I was in, working out of Somerville, uh, Massachusetts. I was in a, a cooperative artist building there. And I've just, yeah, I've been continually experimenting with how I can make that transition from paint to fabric. And I have continued to try to push myself and also make that transition as subtle as possible. My favorite thing is when someone comes up to a piece and they're not sure what's real and what's painted. So that's kind of my ultimate goal to mess with people's perception as far as when they're looking at a piece. And that brings people into my theme subtly. I'm, I don't um, try to hit anybody over the head with my concept, but if you see enough of my work, my pieces, you start to kind of get that sense, that feeling that I'm trying to pull your attention towards attire. It was really over the summer when I, I knew that masks were here to stay. I saw that there was the uh, politicizing of wearing a mask and kind of some people trying to call that a weakness that that you were wearing a mask and really is the opposite. It's giving people strength. It's uniting us. It's helping us fight this invisible enemy. So what's more powerful than that? And then, and then the feeling that we all get when we put on a mask and we go out there, we all feel different. Um, maybe now we're, we're more used to it, but especially in the beginning, it felt so strange and uh, you have to learn to get people's expressions in different ways through their eyes, uh, hard to hear people. Um, you see people having fun with it. And that's what I really wanted to celebrate too, were, were the people that were being creative with the kind of masks that they were wearing. Um, you see people making their own and enjoying that as, as an extra accessory instead of having it weigh them down. So I wanted to celebrate that. And I wanted to show people with that kind of strong, confident gaze. And I asked people in my social network and within my friends and then their friends to send me references. Um, and they were all like really great. I was excited to get the variety of um, subjects because you never really know when you put it out there what you're going to get. But I got some really, really creative submissions. The background with VR is uh, absolutely through my brother. So my brother was one of the first backers of um, Palmer Lucky who, who created the Oculus and uh, Oculus Rift at the time. And he, he is a developer and he has a, um, a startup company that works in AR and VR. And I actually have done some work for him too. So in my work with him, we were reaching out to companies that we thought might benefit from their 3D modeling. And in that, I was looking through my LinkedIn and I came across this gallery that is exclusively in VR. And it just dawned on me that, wow, this is the perfect time for something like this. Even though they did actually start up before the pandemic, they're seeing a ton of interest now. Um, it's, an, it's a really unique concept where anybody, not anybody, but because they do vet you pretty heavily, but anybody can open their own gallery. 
and then bring people in. And what they're seeing is people from all over, uh, a lot of people in Asia, a lot of people in Canada and everywhere in between coming to these shows in VR. Um, it's hard to explain unless you've been in VR, but it actually doesn't take very long for your brain to feel like you are physically there and that you're communicating with these people that you would never probably have the opportunity to communicate with. And one thing I definitely miss with um, being around people, even just like you take for granted is just that like background chatter. And you actually get that in this gallery. Um, you know, if I if I hop in there, I'll show you around. I might, I'll probably be the only one because there's not an event, but they have actual like opening events and you can get that background chatter. And as you get close to someone, you can have a conversation. It's just, it's wild that they're able to replicate that, but then also capitalize on the ability to share with people like outside of your limitations. As it, as it interacts with art, there's, um, you're gonna find that there are so many doors opening, especially within this app. But if you're considering getting an Oculus, because the, the Oculus Quest, um, I believe it came out in December at a more approachable price point, it's $299. So for those even, you know, looking at our PlayStation, that's, I don't even know how much that is, 500 to 600. People who are looking for a different experience where you can you can play games, but you can also interact with your friends. Um, you can go to what looks like a bar and play charades with your friends. And there there's tennis and other things. The other thing that's cool about it is that you're actually up on your feet. So you don't realize you're moving around more than, than you would in a um, seated game. But also it's not limited to gamers. It's, it's a cool experience. You can feel like you're traveling. They have these um, apps where you feel like you're flying in a helicopter over the Grand Canyon and things like that. So these, especially in this time, I know we're hoping that things are changing and that we're able to travel more, but I think having an extra way to interact with people is, is pretty cool. Um, and the, the uh, show itself, I'm going to be giving people another way to experience it without having a headset. So you can um, go to my Facebook uh, group, which is where I'll be casting my version of what I'm seeing. So there's a little less control of you moving around. You'd have to just follow what I'm looking at, but it's another way to be able to experience the show. Um, and then uh, they also, Artgate has also come up with a desktop version that you can download. And that's more of like a point and click, move around yourself experience, which is pretty cool. These are the, uh, let's see, I got it backwards. <laughs> These are the controllers. And so this is my environment. <laughs> it's a very nice lounge, tropical area. Um, let's see, so, we go to the apps, we go to Artgate. We're unlocking the art world. <laughs> All right, so you can see my blue hands. <laughs> we hit get started. And here is the gallery. We hit A and we can find my exhibit. And there's some really cool galleries. Here I am. Stitch in time and we visit exhibition. And here we are. This is my exhibition that is um, a little bit of everything. I like to change my 
walking. <laughs> you can kind of jump around, teleport, or locomotion, which is move a little bit more naturally. So here I have a statement. I'm not sure how well you can read it on the computer casting, but you can read it really clearly in, in uh, VR. So I got my floating hands. If there were other people in the room, they'd be floating hands and heads. <laughs> So we can go right up to a piece and I can actually lean in and look at it and turn my head and look at different things. I've got my card here. Here's another one. So, and then if you see these little crosses, it means I'm getting close to a wall. <laughs> if you have a really big room, you can actually just physically walk around too. I'm just using my controllers to move myself around. But there's actually pretty nice detail. It's like you're really looking at the pieces. So here's the statement and each of the works we can get like right up close. <laughs> and you move your head around as if you're in real life. Um, and I'm using the controllers to move myself but then when I'm there I use my head I can even walk side to side I've got my boundary up so it tells me um, I am not in a huge room if you're in a big room it's kind of cool you can actually walk around yourself um, but this is a piece um, of someone a uh, subject I got in Portsmouth and she was walking around the gardens and has no idea that I painted her <laughs> I used um, her jumpsuit as inspiration for the collage that that is in the background. Um, and these are a couple other newer pieces. This is called the plaid jacket and his jacket's coming off. So what's cool about, I mean, it's not physically coming off the wall here in VR. They're actually looking to expand on that. Right now they have like, you either have 2D art or you have a 3D sculpture, but um, one of my, my brother's company actually helps model um, on my festacollection.com. You can actually see it in AR where the fabric is coming off. So I imagine that they'll get to that point soon. But what's cool is the definition is so good here. It almost does look like it's coming off, which is what I enjoy. And you can see the texture of the canvas too. So this is one where I have kind of a rough painterly background and then a really resolved, um, realistic subject. And then the third level is the actual material coming out. So yeah, here is my, here's my gallery. And again, I'm just here of floating hands and head right now, but when there's an opening, it's filled with other floating heads and hands and you can walk right up and have a conversation. I could explain a piece to someone. They could come to this little info uh, wall and uh, click on a piece, learn about the piece, see, inquire about it. So, yeah, and then the second room is the one that I will be having um, my mask series in. Right now, I just have a video, but I do have one mask piece up there just as a preview. So this is cool. I can make a like huge video. When you walk up to it, it starts to play. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so when you walk away and it stops playing, um, here's one of my mask series paintings. Um, so you can see it painted on copper and you can get really close and see the detail. Um, and I'm not sure how much that translates on, on what you're seeing right now on the screencast, but when I'm looking at it in the VR setting, it feels like it's right in front of me. It's crazy. But this room will be filled with my new series and I'm excited to share that with everybody. Um, here's the yeah, upcoming April 2021. Thank you.